Hi everyone, it's MJ and in this video I want to answer what is the null hypothesis and why can't we accept it? Now with all of these stats questions, I like to start by first looking at the big picture. And the big picture is that in statistics, we have some data, we calculate some things known as statistics in order to get information about parameters and distributions of this thing called the random variable that generated the data in the first place. Now where hypothesis testing comes in is hypothesis testing says, hold on, let's actually, so here, hypothesis testing, let's actually make a guess. Okay, it's a fancy scientific term for guessing. And what we're doing by guessing is we're kickstarting an investigation. We're then gonna carry out a whole bunch of you know, tests and we're then gonna gather some evidence from them and we're gonna see if we can either reject or fail to reject. So this brings us to the second part of the question. If we know that the null hypothesis, you know, what is it? It is a guess that kickstarts an investigation. We now need to ask, why can't we accept it? Why do we use this language of reject and fail to reject? And this is because when we carry out these statistical tests, we are not 100% certain. And this is where stats does become a little bit philosophical. Because if we had to start using the word accept, it means that what we're accepting is therefore the truth. So let's maybe take a step back from philosophy and just look at a very quick example. Let's say our null hypothesis is that the parameter that we're looking after is going to be equal to the value of 20. And then let's say we create a confidence interval where the, the statistical test that generates the confidence interval gives us the following. We have 25 and 30 and this is at a 95% confidence interval. Because our parameter uh, value or, or our guess of 20 does not lie within the confidence interval, we can safely say that we reject it. But if the confidence interval was say 18 to 23, with let's say a 95% confidence interval, we now say fail to reject. And the reason for this language, like we said, is accept means truth. And we're not 100% certain. In fact, we know we're not 100% certain because of the fact that these confidence intervals are only at 95%. Uh, and, and what this basically is telling us is that five times out of 100, the confidence interval is going to be letting us down. And we've got two types of errors. So we've got these errors, types of errors. We have type 1 and we have type 2. Now, type 1 error is when we reject the, the null hypothesis, but it is actually true. So over here, we reject our null hypothesis even though it is true. Type 2 is when we fail to reject uh, the null hypothesis even when it is false. And because this is seen as more of a problem or because we want to try and communicate the fact that we don't have 100% certainty in our statistical test, we prefer to use the language of reject and fail to reject rather than the word accept as this would imply that we're certain that the parameter that we've guessed is true. And because we're not 100% certain, we therefore use this language of fail to reject. Now, in most exams, you will lose marks if you say accept rather than saying fail to reject. So this is an important thing that you do understand so you don't make a mistake in the tests that you write. But as always, if you guys have got any questions, please feel free to ask me. And yeah, check out the Udemy course for more videos on statistics. Keep well. Cheers.